Hello, I'm Julie Thompson. Welcome to the Plymouth Planning Board Candidate Interview. I want to take a moment to thank our candidate for participating in this interview and collaborating with PAC-TV to bring this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. Let me explain the format. Today, Frank Mand will be interviewed. Frank will have two minutes to introduce himself, speak about his background, qualifications, and why he's running for this office. I will then ask a series of questions related to state and local issues. Frank will be hearing the questions for the first time during this forum. He will have two minutes to answer the questions. After the questions, Frank will have two minutes for a closing remark. The two-minute time frame will be shown on the screen for Frank to see. Let's get started with the opening statement. Frank Mand, welcome. You have two minutes. I have two minutes to tell you how I believe we can change direction. How if you elect me, Francis, Frank Mann to the planning board, I can make a difference. I think many of you already know. If I had been on the planning board, they wouldn't have abandoned the Bump Rock Road covenant. If I had been on the planning board, they wouldn't have fought the bylaw that has kept massive solar arrays from devouring our woods and wildlands. As a member of the planning board, I will see things differently. Now, a majority of the board uses zoning regulations as an excuse for doing little to meet the ideals of our master plan. Did you even know we had a master plan? Did you know that it called for setting a physical boundary beyond which expensive town infrastructure should not go? Did you know that it called for preserving the Pine Hill, the hill, not the development? Did you know that it called for preserving the character of our villages, including Chiltonville? Too many town officials have their heads literally in the sand. We changed our earth removal permit regulations to prevent never ending sand and gravel operations, but we still waive many of those restrictions more often than not. Millions of dollars of sand and gravel for what? If you ask people that truly care about this town and its future, what they need, they'll tell you they want the citizen members of our boards and committees to start fighting for them. Plymouth has everything it needs to truly embody the idea of America's hometown, except for one thing, elected officials who share their vision. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go to the first question. Hold on one second, let me reset. Okay, question number one. How does the board balance the need for commercial growth, residential growth, and open space in the community? You have two minutes. Well, ideally, the board balances that by using the regulations that it has, community input and values, and tries to find that happy medium. I don't think that's necessarily been happening. I do think in my research into the board and the zoning regulations, I believe shows, that there are regulations that respect open space. There are regulations that insist on protecting topography and our natural resources, but they seem to be an asterisk that is rarely referred to. So I think really within the regulations, within the system, and perhaps with some changes in our regulatory environment, we can achieve that balance. I just don't think that's happening. I think it's self-evident that the balance is out of whack and that development is happening at a pace far too quick for any board or committee to get a hold of. We need to put the brakes on. We need to look to our values, to our master plan, and to the regulations that exist and find ways. It's incumbent upon the planning board to find ways to uh, achieve the goals the community has, not be limited by regulation or use them as an excuse. Okay, thank you. Uh, question number two, how would you address the issue of lack of affordable or workforce housing here in town? You have two minutes. Well, that's not completely the role of the planning board to assure that there's affordable housing. But I do think we've made some inroads in that regard in terms of multi-level developments. I just don't think that the way that those have been put in place, the pace at which they've been put in place, or the quality is what it should be. But again, I think uh, within our master plan and other regulations is the intent to focus on property that is already uh, being utilized for commercial uses or whatever. And uh, I would look to those areas as well. I would look to some of the developments we have that are large parking lots to use them more effectively. 
I don't think at all we need to expand our infrastructure or expand our developed areas. I think we need to make better use of the areas that we have. And then again, affordable housing is a very sticky issue. And uh, I think we, we need, and I think we're trying as a community to work with the state to change some of the impediments to that. For example, now we often allow uh, 40 bees to come in and uh, they purport to have a certain percentage of uh, affordable housing. It's not really affordable for most people that need affordable housing. But it, at the same time that they add a 25% affordable housing, they, the other 75% increases the total amount of housing so we don't get closer to that, that goal, or that percentage that we need so that we can avoid 40 Bs and do more planning, more proactive planning. Okay, thank you. And now we're gonna to go to question number three. What is your vision for the town for the next five years? You have two minutes. Mm, five year vision. I would hope it would be a 20 or a 50 year vision. We're, we're going through many changes. We're facing many challenges in terms of climate change and rapid growth. Five years is a very short window. But I would say probably what I would hope to do as a member of the planning board is put on the brakes, is slow things down, is give us the opportunity to truly plan. I know there's an awful lot of work that our staff, our planning de uh, departments and others have to do right now just to function on a normal level, but we need to have them doing more planning for the future. So one of the things I would hope for is that we would really fund the kinds of staffing we need to truly plan to look for not just five years, but 10, 20 years. We have to do that because the decisions we're making today are gonna to impact us for 15, 20, 50 years. I, I won't be around much longer than maybe 20, 30 years, but I think we need to, to do the work that creates a community we wanna be part of however long we live uh, for all of our children and other people. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done. So. I think my vision right now is that we have to slow down. We have to put the brakes on. We have to respect what the community wants. We have to start planning for a long-term future. If we don't do that, we're planning by default. We're planning by development. We're trying to, to work around the edges as big developer comes in, come in with big plans. And all we can basically do is tell them what shrubs to plant and how many parking spaces to have. We have to do more than that. Perhaps we have to look at uh, a, a moratorium on development, but we have to do what it takes to ensure a, a future that we can all share in. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're going to move on to closing remarks and you will have two minutes for your closing remarks. Go right ahead. Let me take a sip of water. Of course you're cynical. Of course, you don't trust the promises of a politician. I am a far cry from a politician. I'm someone who grew up in Plymouth, not someone who was born here. I've only been here 40 years. I'm someone who came to understand and appreciate what it meant to have a hometown here. I began life as a service brat moving from base to base. I enjoyed that lifestyle, the things I saw, the places I traveled to. So when I first came to Plymouth, I laughed at the notion that this was America's hometown. But then I was hired by the old Colony Memorial and was required to write about the people, their desires, their pride in the history and beauty of this community. I spent a year getting up at 4 a.m. to take a sunrise picture somewhere in Plymouth every day and I saw that beauty, those beaches, ponds, woods, and wildlands, saw it for myself. I became entranced by our unique environment, our rare species. I joined the Southeastern Massachusetts Pine Barrens Alliance to work to protect this globally rare ecoregion. I truly love living here. And I'm sincerely concerned that if we don't change direction, we can lose it all. I know that I will have to work hard, that I have much to learn, that my ideals will be constrained by regulations. But you have to begin with vision, with ideals, with hope, or there's nowhere to go. Don't elect another bureaucrat. Elect me, Francis Frank Mand, to the planning board. 
Let's work together to change direction. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, for participating in this interview. We wish you the best of luck throughout your campaign and in the election. For our viewers, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in watching replays of this interview, please visit our website, pactv.org slash elections, for replay times and online viewing options, including PACTV's on-demand and streaming service, PACTV Prime. And please make your choices heard by voting in the special election on Saturday, May 15th. Thank you and good day.